And just um, one of the big things that I have really, really enjoyed about this is the scenes that they have pulled directly from the game that have been line for line. It made me feel like I was playing the game again for the very first time and witnessing that scene. So they've just done an amazing job all around. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be over The Last of Us. Uh, the consensus about the show is that it is a fucking masterpiece, and I have to agree 100% because uh, the video game originally came out. Now, this is a video game, obviously, the show is based off of. It originally came out in uh, June of 2013, and I bought this game on a complete whim just based on the title alone and ended up falling completely in love with this game, the story, all of it, the characters. And I have since played that game dozens of times through through each of its uh, reimaginings or what have you through the different generations of the systems over the last decade. And now I'm um, kind of going into the review for the show and everything. Um, the show has been a perfect adaptation of the video game by far. It has been a masterpiece of work that has surpassed any adaptations that we've seen to date for a lot of video games. Like a lot of people when they do an adaptation of a game, it just completely does no justice to the game. Uh, the most recent one I can think of is Uncharted. A lot of people didn't like that movie and you know I didn't have high praise for it either. I saw it once and I'll probably never watch it again. And But with this, they have done everything perfectly with the uh, creative team, including the creator of the video game, Neil Druckmann. He has come in, he has done his thing, he has teamed up with amazing people that did uh, Chernobyl, and just, they brought all of this to life in the best way possible. And along with that, yes, they've made changes, but it's completely necessary to do changes for this kind of thing, because they have to make it to where you don't know what's exactly going to happen every step of the way or else there's no mystery to it. There's no surprises or anything like that and it kind of takes away from the experience of the show. And so kind of with that, they have gone off and did uh, offshoot stories or gone into more detail with certain characters or just completely kind of omitted characters altogether. The whole series takes place 10 years prior to when the game actually does because... They didn't want to, I'm going to make up a word here, they didn't want to futurize it. They didn't want to plan for a future kind of setting or anything. So the uh, game takes place in 2013, but the show takes place in 2003. And so they still got that same 20-year time jump and just kind of going with today's world and everything. I have to make a bunch of assumptions about how the world could be another 20 years from now. And so... Um, they decided to go that direction, which has worked completely fine. There's been nothing wrong with that at all. And so you still get that same effect, especially from that opening episode. We had that cold open with the scientists back in the 1960s, kind of explaining the origin of cordyceps or what they really are in general and how they can't survive outside of bodies of a certain degree unless it were to mutate or become evolved. And so... Um, they did this cold open, which was amazing, because I can't remember the actor's name, but he was in the Mummy movies, and he did various other um, HBO shows, I think. I uh, can't remember his name for the life of me. They did that, and then they fast forward to 2003, and you see the same story kind of take off from the game, where we have Joel and his daughter Sarah and his brother Tommy just trying to get by in the crazy world that they live in on the outbreak day of this plague or this virus or parasite or what have you going through all of that the initial um outbreak and joel losing his daughter that scene by the way still had the same effect even after playing that game so many times it was completely devastating to see joel lose his daughter in that in that horrific way and you just see how traumatized he is as it proceeds on through the episode and with the following episodes and just to see the person that he had to become to survive. And just because I'm sure there was a lot of trauma behind losing his daughter. And he just probably hit that point where he just, fuck it. There's no, there's no reason to be sympathetic or anything towards all these people. Or towards anyone that I have to come across that I may have to kill just to get a scrap of food or whatever. And so uh, we go from there. The uh, first episode is all about that 
first half of it anyways is about that outbreak day and then proceeding on that 20-year time jump where we see Joel in this quarantine zone. He's burning uh, infected bodies or dead bodies or whatever, and that's just part of his everyday life now. That's, that's what you do to survive. Within these quarantine zones, you're assigned all these random tasks to keep it functioning, really, and to keep it clear of infection. And we see then he proceeds to meet up with a soldier in this back alley who he's made deals with before just based on their conversation. And we see that he's getting by being a being a black market smuggler. And then we are introduced to Tess. And it does follow a lot of the same story, her dealing with uh, Robert and all of his men. But they are kind of dispatched in... A different way than they are in the game and then they meet ellie and they go about their business and then they make their way out of the city and uh, we see a moment where joel has this kind of a ptsd flashback kind of thing where they are caught outside the wall by that same soldier that he was dealing with earlier tackles him to the ground beats him to death and it's kind of his way of making up for freezing like he did with sarah when she was unfortunately gunned down by the soldier during all the chaos of the outbreak but kind of moving on the story progresses as it does through the game they're making their way through the city trying to get out and uh unfortunately tess does follow suit with the game where she gets infected and unfortunately dies and then you know we see them make their way out of the city and make their way to uh bill and frank's now bill and frank are a couple of survivors that are living outside the quarantine zone like bill is this survivalist we get some kind of more background on his story because in the game we don't really know a whole lot about him we especially don't know anything about frank because frank's never technically introduced we're just kind of kind of introduced to a corpse for the most part uh he comes bill comes across him as they're trying to make their way to get uh joel and ellie out of out of his town but we're introduced to these characters now bill is a gay character and Frank was his uh, lover, boyfriend, husband, what have you. And uh, in the game, we get no background on that story, what their relationship really was like, and uh, how they came to know each other and all of that. But within the series, which I really enjoyed, and a lot of people have mixed feelings about it, I really enjoyed the fact that we got that background about Bill and Frank, how they became who they were, how they met, their life together. And it all kind of starts out with Bill... He is the kind of a paranoid uh, survivalist and everything. And as Fedra are rounding up these people who inevitably, unfortunately, will go off to die because there's no room within the quarantine zones for these people. So the soldiers just figure rather have these people dead than have them chance being infected and completely taking down their quarantine zone. Being the guy he is, he is in the sub-basement of his house watching it all go down as these people are being carted off and then proceeds to gate off this whole part of his community where his house is and just kind of create his own quarantine zone. He sets it with booby traps. He's, he's completely stocked up on weapons and food and everything he needs to get by. With that, we see how he actually comes to meet Frank with these booby traps that he has set outside the perimeter of his quarantine zone that he's built for himself. Frank actually falls into a pit trap. And then it's from there that he uh, kind of introduces himself and Bill offers him sanctuary on a temporary basis. And then from there, the story unfolds to where they fall in love and they spend the next 20 years together living this isolated life. Much to the disappointment and kind of, I don't know, distaste or just not, uh, not happy by what Frank wants. Frank wants to have friends. He wants to be able to you know count on people and trade with people or whatever just to be just to have people and friends and it's this where they come across Joel and Tess where they begin this trading relationship getting things inside the quarantine zone that you can't really get anywhere else because as the world fell apart there was no more production of anything and within this quarantine zone they still all have access to um, production of medicine and uh, ammo and a few handful of other little things just to make sure that these communities survive. And it's with this uh, relationship that they develop that we see that uh, Bill and Joel never really liked each other, but they trusted each other. 
And we see Bill and Frank live out their lives to the point where we see Frank, he actually gets sick. And being that there's no modern medicine anymore, it does unfortunately take his life. And then with this, um, Bill actually decides to die with him. So they kind of make a suicide pact. But beforehand, they actually do get married and kind of solidify their love for each other, which I thought was really cool. So we got to see more of a deep love story between these two men that we did not get in the game. And it really just added to who these guys are and just made for a great story with this particular episode. And then we see at the end of the episode where Joel and Ellie make their way to that area and they discover what's happened. And they just kind of load up. Bill had actually left a note for Joel kind of explaining the situation, what happened, and that he's free to take anything he needs. And it's in this that they get the truck and uh, ammo and just get themselves cleaned up. And they move along to continue their journey across the country to find these fireflies and to find Tommy. And then within the uh, following episode, we get a couple of other rather important or large characters from the game which is Henry and Sam that they come across in this quarantine zone and they're being chased by the uh, rebels of that quarantine zone who overthrew the Fedra uh, soldiers and put them all to death and anyone that was collaborating with them and it's in this that we Henry was actually part of the reason that um, they are being hunted because he did turn in the brother of the leader of the rebels of this organization or whatever of this quarantine zone so he is on someone's personal shit list. He is being hunted down for turning in this person, all for the sake of um, Henry needing medicine for his brother Sam, who has leukemia, and who is also deaf. And so they're just really kind of between a rock and a hard place with this situation. And so they're trying to find their way out of the city, and it's in this that they come across Joel and Ellie, and they form this kind of random relationship where, hey, you get me out of the city, and I will show you the way and you clear the way for me and so they do all this and they get to the point where they're pinned down by the sniper from the game who's at a house at the end of the block and um rather than being a direct copy from the game where they make their way out of the situation the leader of the rebels or revolution or whatever you want to call it makes their way to that area and they pin henry down and he's ready to give himself up if it means that his little brother can get away and it's during this that uh, Joel is up in the sniper nest that he has taken from this other person. And uh, we actually get something that is a complete deviation from the game, but it made for one hell of a scene where, where Joel snipes the driver of one of these trucks, plows it into the side of the building, just like in the game. But in the, in the series, we see that this truck collapses into the ground, and we got kind of a tease to this within earlier in the episode where we see a section of this building kind of uh, sunken in and the floor is kind of pulsating because we do learn earlier in the series that the cordyceps actually grow underground too connecting all of these uh infected people which was a huge change from the game but again added to what makes the show what it is giving all of these uh infected hive minds so if you disrupt one area they're made aware and they go looking in that area. They go charging to destroy whatever, whatever uh, the cordyceps have picked up from the tendrils on the ground. And um, within this scene, the truck sinks into the ground and out comes just this giant horde of infected. Uh, we got clickers, we got runners, and uh, everything in between. And then we see our first bloater. And this bloater looks magnificent. <laughs> They really did a great job. I read that this was a mix of CGI and practical effects. The suit is actually a $500,000 suit, weighs about 80 pounds, and we had a six foot plus uh, guy wearing the suit, completely pulled it off, and it just was mind blowing to see this. And hopefully they do bring the bloater back before the end of the series, because we are on episode six, right? Yeah, we just had episode 6, and so there's only 10 episodes in the season, so we are already to the point where the show is almost over, and they have greenlit it for a second season, but anyone that's familiar with the games, I won't give anything away, but that next season, and from what I've heard, they are going to do it by the game, is going to be really fucking heartbreaking, 
and is going to probably send people into a full-blown riot. But, you know, to each their own. I personally did not play that game more than once. I was really kind of just shocked by the story that they did with the characters, and I just was not able to get into it as much as I did the first one. So, it is what it is, and uh, hopefully maybe we will get a third game, but from everything I'm reading, we're not sure. Uh, Neil Druckmann said they might just walk away from it, but there's also rumors that it's already in production, so it's hard to tell what's real. And kind of concluding with the latest episode, which was episode 6, we see Joel and Ellie have since left us because within that last episode, this is kind of a big part that I left out that made it so heartbreaking, uh, Sam actually gets infected during this whole scene where this these rebels or whatever are battling the infected. Him and Henry get trapped under a car and Sam unfortunately does get bit. And uh, Ellie actually thinks that maybe her blood will help fight the infection and she cuts open her hand and smears it into the wound. But... Uh, it uh, ends up not working, and Sam does become infected and attacks Ellie in the morning. And um, it's here that Henry is forced to kill his brother, and he can't live with what he's done and takes his own life. And it's like, it's a really heartbreaking scene that does come straight from the game, same situation. And uh, so it just further adds to the greatness that the show has become. And so, uh, again, moving on to this last episode... We see Joel and Ellie have continued on their journey across the country. They come across this old couple in this cabin. Joel is kind of snuck in there and taking this woman hostage, meaning no harm really, but he's prepared to do what he has to just because that's who he is and that's what he's had to do for the last 20 years. But they get the story of this group of people that are along this river that they call the River of Death, and they leave bodies behind wherever they go but it turns out this is just kind of a reputation for this group they are prepared to take people that pose a threat but they are not just straight up killers and also revealing that this is tommy's group from the game uh in nebraska where they have this whole community set up that is running off an old hydroelectric plant and then we get our big reunion with joel and tommy and then we kind of get the same kind of uh back and forth that we got from the game where Joel reveals that Ellie is immune and he wants Tommy to take her off his hands and just we get kind of a vulnerable moment with Joel where instead of getting pissed and wanting to fight with Tommy and everything he just reveals that he is scared that he's too old to take care of her and that he's going to freeze up because he keeps having these moments where he's just literally frozen with fear and he starts basically having a panic attack and he can't control it and he's worried that's what's going to happen out there. And it's, going to, it's just going to get her killed. And then there goes humanity's chance at coming back from this virus. And so he does this. Tommy agrees. But uh, come morning, Joel is in this barn or stable or whatever with the horses waiting for them. Because he's decided that he's going to do it himself. Because he wants to see her safely get where she's going. And he does. he has come to care for her like he does in the game. And so they go on. They make it to the... Colorado uh, Eastern University or whatever and they are attacked by some random survivors but instead of like in the game where Joel falls off this balcony onto some rebar he is just attacked by a single man and then uh, gets stabbed in the stomach with a broken piece of a baseball bat and they make their way off and he collapses off of his horse and the episode ends so now we're waiting to see how they play out the part where they introduce David, who is from this cannibal community that uh, kidnaps Ellie while she's trying to find medicine, what she needs to get Joel back on his feet. And just a lot of stuff really, um, a lot of stuff still to play out with only three episodes left. And so um, I'm really excited for it. This show has been nonstop just perfection. And just, they've done a really great job. I was really unsure about the casting when I first heard about it, but they have nailed it with the casting. And we uh, should see in the next episode, I think, um, Ashley Johnson, she will portray Ellie's mom in a flashback. We should see Troy Baker as one of the members of this cannibal community with the uh, antagonist, David. And so uh, it was. it's great that we'll see 
voice actors from the show come in and do these things because we did see it in the um, in the fifth episode where we had the voice actor who played Tommy actually play the right hand man to that uh, to Kathleen to the leader of the rebels and it's funny because if you watch it and if you played the game as much as I have there's a scene where you can really hear Tommy when he's talking so I thought that was pretty cool I don't know if that's something he did on purpose or that's just his natural voice or whatever and to just kind of add to that list along with Tommy as far as voice actors are concerned we did also have the voice actress that played Marlene come back and actually do the live version of Marlene and we still have yet to see more of her I assume if they play it through she will appear probably in the second to last episode or even the last episode and uh so we'll see what that does with her and just um one of the big things that I have really really enjoyed about this is the scenes that they have pulled directly from the game that have been line for line and most recently with this last episode they pulled the whole uh, you have no idea what loss is scene that came from the game and just took it to a whole nother level. It was completely heartbreaking the way they delivered it. It made me feel like I was playing the game again for the very first time and witnessing that scene. So they've just done an amazing job all around. Anyways, uh, kind of a breakdown of the story so far with The Last of Us TV show. It has been just an amazing show. They've done such a really good job, even though cutting out all these different sections of story from the game, they're still bringing a lot of story because the game takes a solid probably 14, 15 hours or so, depending you know how fast you're running through it and how thorough you are looking around for clues and whatever. And um, so it's just been an amazing show. I am really pleased with it because as I kind of mentioned in the beginning of the video, a lot of people, especially with... Uh, video game adaptations there is not a good track record for it because we've had so many over the last couple decades and most of them are completely forgettable and so it's good to just see this come in and just completely destroy the standard come in and just be this amazing piece of work with great acting great uh, action great effects and just they did everything right so I am very much looking forward to the second season but at the same time knowing the story it's going to be a rough one. So uh, anyways, if you enjoyed kind of this story so far, breakdown of The Last of Us TV show, uh, please leave those comments, leave those likes, and also, obviously, if you feel so inclined, please subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. So until next time, guys, I will see you later.